Look, I can tell you that the phones have been running hot all over Australia. My counterparts in the fraud and high-tech crime areas across the country have been inundated with inquiries and concerned people feeling that the, um, the message that went out threatening to take their lives if they didn't part with money was directed to them personally. And the message, of course, is that is not the case, that uh, these crooks have directed en masse to people, to the communities of Australia. And uh, it has, certainly has concerned a lot of people. Any idea numbers? Hundreds, thousands? It'd be thousands across the country, easily. You've got to bear in mind that we know from experience that you're lucky to get one in 50 make, uh, victims of a crime like this actually make a report to authorities. And the fact that hundreds of calls have been made, um, our phone's been going all day, and I know that's been the case in the state, is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Do you know where the texts are originating from? We're still making inquiries. Um, we know that uh, we've had the, um, when I say we, and collectively Law Enforcement Australia, um, the email account has been taken down. Um, we're making some inquiries. The, um, the IP address uh, looks like we used a gateway um, in Queensland. And we're looking at uh, further inquiries to establish was it a person in Australia who actually instigated um, this, uh, this matter in the first instance. Can we just get on tape saying what the actual scam is? Sure. Look, um, people, uh, thousands of people we expect around Australia have received a text message essentially stating that uh, they will be killed if they don't pay up $5,000 and to make contact with a Yahoo email address. Um, I noticed that the scam sort of first surfaced in about 2007. Um, were there people who actually did pay up the money, do you know, at that time? Yeah, look, people have paid money in the past, absolutely. This has been a successful scam. Um, people are so frightened and shocked that um, they'll protect their family at all cost and they actually have parted with money in the past. And the crooks know this, and they know it's been successful. What is extraordinary, extraordinary in these circumstances is the extent of contact across the Australian landscape. We've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. To have so many people contacted at one time. You know, we are one of the most connected societies on the planet. 80% of the Australian public is connected to the internet. We are great, um, have a great appetite for smartphone technology, and everyone's got a phone. But what we're seeing, what that tells us, is that the crooks have an extraordinary level or quantity of Australian consumer data that they're exploiting. And I've never seen it to the scale that's, uh, that has occurred today. If you do find it is someone in Australia, what charges are they likely to be facing? Well, we assess all the circumstances uh, at the time, but uh, um, certainly uh, there'd be federal legislation, probably legislation and ACMA uh, attempted fraud. We've got to look at did they actually receive any money, who has actually fallen victim and parted with the cash. Not only the cash, but if they responded to the email, there's every chance they've surrendered their identity information. What is the long-term consequences of that that's going to carry with them for years to come? Because we know an identity is worth money to these criminals. Um, what should people do if they do receive that email or text message, or what should they not do? Look, do not respond. Delete it immediately, and um, don't panic, because that's like what they prey upon. That's what they... Um, take great uh, joy in getting you to panic and respond. As a consequence, you surrender your identity, you su surrender your finances, and um, it's nothing but trouble from that point forward. How would people go about getting hold of obviously such a large database without obviously detailing exactly how you do it? Is it you say you're surprised the sheer numbers? Is this a group of databases that they've been able to access? And is there something people can do to stop themselves from getting these messages? In? The reality is we've been surrendering our details to online and to the internet and have them hacked and acquired for the last decade, easily. And we know that um, uh, cyber criminals have industrialised the process of harvesting our details and selling them as databases to uh, other criminals. So it's not a case of them hacking a specific database necessarily, but simply going and paying for it. And they don't have to have the setup themselves. They can go into a dark market or an industrialised underworld and just pay someone to actually send out all the emails or send out all the texts. And uh, as a um, as a trade uh, bit of trade work done. There is like a, a do not call register with you know telemarketers or something. People are just going to have to put up with this in the future. That's right. We know sometimes the uh, a lot of the calls that we get in, in the, um, 
made through VoIP systems, a voice over internet protocol, so using the internet to make the phone calls. They're on, uh, it's almost a computer system, and it'll just randomly dial the next number, and the next number, and the next number. It self-generates and self-populates, and it goes on for some time. So, But this, um, as I said before, is quite extraordinary in the breadth and the speed um, of the attack upon the Australian communities. You said that you found an IP address here within Queensland. Is this unusual? Would you not expect something like this to come from overseas? Well, well in the first instance, yes, I would expect to be overseas, but by the same token, we know that any good crook is actually going to use a proxy server or a, what we call a zombie computer. So they won't use their computer to make that content to take out a, the registration of a new email account that they want to commit crimes with. They'll use a compromised uh, computer, and I expect... Now, or I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case uh, at this time. Um, a Yahoo email address is something we typify with a lot of frauds coming out of places such as Nigeria. Um, and that was what was used at this point in time, so time will tell. You still think it may be originated from overseas? I would expect so. All the past experience tells us when we've seen these frauds occur previously that the money has always gone overseas. Just again, you don't know of anyone that's been caught out this time around? Not yet. What if someone has um, fallen victim to it and has paid money? When they need to report to the police immediately so the necessary inquiries can be put in a train. We have some great relationships with overseas agencies. We use the resources of the AFP when they liaison officer network around the globe to actually... Uh, Get to the information and, and make uh, inquiries and investigations. Can they stop, can, should they ring the bank and, and try and stop the payment? Or I would I would suspect that the uh, the five thousand will have been asked to be transferred in cash. Uh, if it has gone electronically through a bank, uh, absolutely contact the bank to stop the payment. But I would be surprised if that's the case. Are you still wanting people that have just deleted the message to contact and inform police, or are you happy just for them to? No, just delete it, but by all means, uh, probably the best uh, point of contact to get the greatest uh, awareness of what, how significant this has been across the Australian landscape is go to Scamwatch at the ACCC and uh, register their information there. Is this the, the largest sort of on mass scam that, that you've come across? Certainly in the time frame, what we've seen today across the country, to get the, the sheer level of public response that we've encountered today, I've never seen before. What's your message for the people responsible? Maybe I can't say it to the, the Prince going, but... How would you describe those we'll get you. people? Yeah, <laughs> I, I nearly said something, I thought, oh, no, don't say that, Brian, don't say that. <laughs> no, look, the message is that, you know, you will be held accountable. You rip off people um, in Australia, in Queensland, in New South Wales, in Victoria, in South Australia, you will be held called to account. You know, as I said, we've gone to pains and lengths to establish good international relations. Um, we have secured prosecutions, convictions in other countries where these scammers have ripped off our, our communities, and we'll continue to uh, work in that regard. Sorry, was there another question after that? Um, I was just going to ask, um, how would you describe uh, these, these scammers and this scam? Psychopaths. I mean, they're absolutely the pure sociopath. They don't care what, in any way whatsoever, the anxiety, the fear, the detriment they cause to any person. They simply want your money, and they'll do anything um, to get it. And um, if that causes you a great deal of panic, so so be it. In fact, that's what they rely upon. They rely upon your fear to not think logically, but to respond in the manner in which they want you to. Do you, you might you think will fall for it? Will it be like you know an elderly person, or who might fall for it? Um, uh, a senior person is is very likely to fall for it. Someone who is new to the internet, new to um, um, just it might sound strange, but have got a, a phone that don't normally get too many text messages, other than from uh, loved ones, so that they don't they're not texting all the time, such such as some of our young people, um, people that don't have the experience of getting too many text messages and what they do is they think it's personally delivered to them which is what they want you to think um, so those people are the ones that are more likely to respond than other or someone who has been in and around for a bit, much longer period of time and um, uh, is less likely to respond this is for an 
predominantly text messages. I know in the original release it was perhaps more you mentioned emails as well. Yeah, I think the email is, we've seen it emails, but mostly today has been text messages. There were some references. And one was that we've seen in the past, is that correct? We've seen, we've been seen both. We've seen Hitmail, sorry, Hitman emails and Hitman text messages. We have seen both. I wouldn't have seen the hitman probably for about 18 months, um, and then it, you look um, even then probably 12 months before that. It's almost like it's, it's going in waves and cycles. And I expect it'll come out again, re-emerge sometime in the future. The reality is this is not a random event. Um, this is organised crime. It's not a one person um, just having a crack at something. They've done their research, they've acquired their contact lists, they've paid for the distribution of the, uh, the text messages. In the, to respond to that, you think of the sheer volume of uh, messages they've sent out. They've then got to have the support to be able to respond to the emails, to facilitate the frauds. This is not just a single person. This is, a, this is an organisation. This is very much a corporate approach to how they're doing business. They will look at the return on investment. They will look at how much they had to expend to actually facilitate this fraud and was it worthwhile to do again. If it is, they'll do it again in the future. But you wouldn't be surprised there's a number of people that already have or in the coming days may fall victim to this fraud? I would expect people have fallen victim to already to this fraud. Those previous ones, like back in 2007, 2008, did anyone um, ever find out where they originated, where it originated from? It went back to, uh, previously, they were back to West Africa. 